Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Ultimate Historian. There's no doubt that September 11th terrorist attacks, or 9-11, have changed the world. This year we commemorate the 15th anniversary of the attacks. But as Ultimate Historians we have to ask, what if 9-11 didn't happen? Quick disclaimer, I understand that 9-11 was a traumatic event and still triggers strong emotional reactions for many. Please understand I am not trying to offend anyone. My video is only meant to shine light on what the world might look like if it didn't happen and while I did use research to craft my scenario, in the end this is just my opinion. Furthermore, while many channels turn off comments when discussing 9-11, I plan to leave them on for now in the hopes we can have a reasonable and respectful discussion about the alternate history. With that said, let's begin. Without 9-11, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq would not happen. In fact, the whole war on terror would never be declared. Without the nation rallying behind him to fight terrorism, President George W. Bush would still be the president who lost a popular vote and only won the Electoral College because of a 5-4 Supreme Court decision. Thus, without much political capital to spend, he would have to take a moderate stance on many issues for fear of antagonizing voters, which would encourage more compromise in American politics than we see today. The Tea Party and Occupy Wall Street may never arise, and libertarianism would remain a fringe ideology. Cable news networks may also be more restrained. The deficit would still be an issue, but without the massive spending caused by the war on terror, it wouldn't be as great. More importantly, Muslim Americans, or people perceived as Muslims, would face less discrimination in America. If one group of Muslims wanted to build a mosque or community center near the World Trade Center, no one would care. Without the war on terror, America may take a more active role in the conflicts surrounding Israel, North Korea, Darfur, or Somalia. Actual military intervention is likely in most of those places, but without obligations elsewhere, America could make its displeasure known. By 2004, if no major controversies happened during his first term, Bush would be re-elected. Bush wasn't the worst president and probably did as well as anybody could given what happened. While the Iraq war was a mistake, people forget about the public demand to do something after the invasion of Afghanistan. And even his domestic policies that became unpopular, like No Child Left Behind, had bipartisan support in the beginning. Thus, I could see him win in 2004. That being said, it's in his second term that things would start to go downhill. Events like Hurricane Katrina and the Great Recession would blemish Bush's legacy and hurt Republicans' chances in the 2008 election. In this alternate timeline, John McCain would likely face off against Hillary Clinton, with the economy being the major issue. If Hillary is elected, she might try to offer Barack Obama a seat on the Supreme Court to stop him from challenging her position as party leader. If McCain is elected, his moderate policies may drive a wedge between him and the more conservative elements of his party, especially if he maintained his 2,000 stances against flying the Confederate battle flag or opposing evangelist leaders that he once referred to as agents of intolerance. Either Clinton or McCain would have to deal with some sort of leak about mass surveillance of American citizens. This may sound cynical, but as technology made communication easier to do and easier to listen in on, it's unlikely that the government wouldn't try to spy on Americans. Personally, I think the reason you haven't seen more outrage is that most Americans already assumed the government was spying on them. Having it confirmed it doesn't really change anything. Additionally, Rudy Giuliani would be relatively unknown without 9-11 and would not have run for president in 2008. Michael Bloomberg may also have never been elected mayor of New York City. Sarah Palin would be unknown outside of Alaska, meaning Tina Fey would have to find someone else to mock. By 2012, the American political landscape could be so different it would be hard to speculate plausibly about it. But that is just America. What is happening in the rest of the world in this timeline? One could argue the United States would have better relations with other nations since they would not be building up their military, spying on their allies, or projecting their power across the globe. Russia and China would be more restrained in their disputes with their neighbors because the United States would be more capable of opposing them. Saddam Hussein would have a longer tenure as president of Iraq since avoiding 9-11 was probably the only thing that could keep America from invading Iraq in 2003. Then again, he may still fall from power if the Arab Spring happens. Many of the causes for that phenomenon would have existed without 9-11 and thus could still occur. This means terrorist groups like ISIS could still rise, but America's actions post 9-11 have been criticized for converting more people to extreme Islam. So perhaps terrorist groups never gain as strong of a following and more democratic faction in the Middle East prevail. As for Afghanistan, well before the American intervention, the civil war had been going on since the 1970s, so you would still see the Taliban in control and at war with the Northern Alliance. Now let's step away from war and politics and talk about economics. The American economy would likely have been better off without all the spending on the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. There may also be more corporate regulations, since without 9-11, people wouldn't be distracted from Enron and other examples of corporate greed and mismanagement. The FBI may even focus more attention on combating white-collar crime. Thus, with there being more distrust in major corporations, cases like Citizens United may have been decided differently. And organizations like super PACs would never exist. The Great Recession would still happen as the cause of it would still be around, but perhaps it might not have been as bad. More money in America's budget may mean that some of the ideas floating around about direct aid to Americans may actually have been implemented. Next, let's look at the cultural landscape of an America without 9-11. 
The New York Yankees could go on to win the 2001 World Series. Without 9-11, Randy Johnson and Curt Schilling don't get a week off to rest. As a result, the Arizona Diamondbacks wouldn't go on to beat the San Francisco Giants by two games for the division title. The Giants lose the St. Louis Cardinals, the Cardinals defeat the Atlanta Braves, and the Cardinals lose to the Yankees. Meanwhile, Pat Tillman would never have left his football career to join the military and would still be alive. You may also see a lot less praising of soldiers and veterans at NFL games. Furthermore, no one hears God bless America at sporting events. Many films and TV shows inspired by 9-11 or the War on Terror would never be made, such as Team America, United 93, Flight 93, Fahrenheit 9-11, and the World Trade Center. Films like Spider-Man would predominantly feature the World Trade Center, instead of having it digitally removed. 24, Fringe, Third Watch, West Wing, Rescue Me, and Battlestar Galactica would either have not been produced or their stories would have been vastly different. The Lord of the Rings would not have been as popular without the need for escapism, but they would still make a lot of money, but not enough money to have The Hobbit split up into three separate films. Other films may be more popular without the controversy surrounding them, like Big Trouble and Collateral Damage. Thus, Tim Allen could have had a more successful film career. Or Arnold Schwarzenegger may never have left acting to run for governor of California. Gritty, realistic remakes would also be less prevalent as the constant images of terrorism and war wouldn't be shown on the news. This may mean Christopher Nolan's Batman films would never be made, and we wouldn't see Heath Ledger's awesome performance as a Joker. As for Marvel, Iron Man would have a different origin story for Tony Stark, and Shia would be less influenced by the modern American government and military. Dick Cheney would likely be more obscure in this timeline, thus Stephen King does not use him as inspiration for the antagonist in Under the Dome. In fact, other King works, like The Song of Susanna, would be different since there would be no references to 9-11. The 2005 novel, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer, and the movie based on it would not be made. As for alternate history, people would stop asking S.M. Sterling why he didn't reference 9-11 in Conquistador, if it is still published. Harry Turtledove would never publish The Man with the Iron Heart, since it was written in response to the anti-war movement and the Iraqi insurgency. John Birmingham may never write the Axis of Time series or Without Warning and its sequels, since all of those books were highly influenced by 9-11 and the events following it. Lavi Tidhar would also never publish the award-winning Osama. Meanwhile, the old cliché of always having terrorists destroy some building in the 21st century, regardless of how far back the point of divergence is, would rarely, if ever, appear. Jessica Simpson and the cliché would likely have never been married, since they claim 9-11 brought them together. Their reality television show would never have been produced, Jessica's reputation for being dumb would never materialize, and both would only be remembered for being singers. The Dixie Chicks would not be boycotted by country fans for being anti-Bush. Toby Keith may not be as popular without 9-11 inspiring many of his songs. Emo music would also be different, as My Chemical Romance wouldn't have formed since Gerald Way was motivated to start a band after 9-11. Green Day's American Idiot wouldn't be released, nor the Broadway show it inspired. In fact, Green Day may have disappeared entirely, being replaced by Sum 41, Blink-182, or some other pop-punk band. Neil Young also may never write his 2002 song, Let's Row, since it was a response to 9-11. DC Comics would never have Identity Crisis, as Dan DiDio said it was inspired in part by 9-11. Furthermore, if DC reboots their continuity in 2011 with the New 52, the new universe would be far less paranoid and grim. Frank Miller would never write Holy Terror, and Batman The Dark Knight Strikes Again would be slightly different, and Miller himself would be a less controversial figure in the comics community. Now that we've talked about pop culture, what about technology? blogs would be less developed since without the politically charged climate of 9-11, people would be less motivated to take to the internet to voice their opinion. Google News either wouldn't have been created or else would be delayed as the events of 9-11 motivated people to provide a quick way to search for the news. Congress may never have canceled construction of the F-22 since America would likely continue with its Cold War weapons mentality. Spending and development on drone technology would be behind, but wouldn't be avoided altogether. Remote control aircraft aren't anything new, and building one big enough to pack heavy firepower doesn't require that much imagination. With less spending on wars, there may be a better fund at NASA. The space shuttles would still be retired, but America would have had another program take its place instead of relying on the Russians or private contractors to get into space. The timetable to return to the moon or land on Mars would also be pushed up. On the downside, advances in treatments for head wounds and other injuries motivated by the Iraq war may be delayed. Thus, lives saved by such treatments could be lost. In fact, there are so many ways our timeline could be different that it's hard to list all of them. If you have any ideas about what a timeline without 9-11 would look like, please share them in the comments. Well, that is all to say in the subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, or support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, The Alternate Historian. Bye.